less other lead or phosphorus because don't forget the bees are taking um, nectar from the flower. Mm -hmm. And if there is like, for instance, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Ugoni cleanup. So say it was a hive um, located in Ugoni land. Of course, by default, your honey would be exposed to benzene, which is in the environment. Mm -hmm. So what we do, and I think this is where the value add of a company like us is as opposed to other people that just buy um, honey in kegs, is that you need to know where your honey is coming from. You need to build that quality assurance on your supply chain. You need to train the farmers. We 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 look at a whole capex investment in ensuring that the ad growers have the understanding because if you are buying honey from a co-ops that has chemicals, then obviously you know it's not sustainable and you could end up being sued, etc. Mm -hmm. So for us to be able to export efficiently as a country, this is where um, the regulator needs to work with the Niger NABG, which is Nigerian Agriculture Business Group, work with competent um, companies that already have had in place sound, robust quality assurance to enable that happen. But I'll tell you something, I was in a factory, um, a processing unit in the UK, and it's just, there were just six people, but highly automated, and the annual turnover was 30 million pounds. So people, Ouch. 30 million pounds. There's honey. six people from honey. Yes. Right. So <laughs> people, people, and then you see, when you look at the beekeeping value chain, we're just looking at honey. Mm -hmm. There's honey, there's bee wax. So like our companies at Sehai Food, because we're doing an end-to-end -end process, we've got the bee wax. And the bee wax is what you use for lipstick, you use it for pharmaceuticals, it's what you use in the, um, in the heating pan for drugs. You know, so these are, again, at the moment, you've got pharmaceutical companies in Nigeria bringing in bee wax from abroad because mm. they, the, the local environment had not sort of um, come together to pro process and provide suitable raw uh, materials. And lastly, there's propolis. Propolis is very high end. It needs to be collected in a very, very um, regulated and sensitive manner so that it does not... Um, um, and that's more deteriorate. expensive than the honey. It is much more expensive, yeah. far more yes. expensive. Now, what kind of tests do you perform when you collect the honey from the various farms? Well, that's where we come to ensure quality. We actually take samples into the lab. You can carry out physical chemical tests. The physical chemical test is actually done in lab. You can't do this physically in the field mm -hmm. as an individual. So when you take this in, you're able to find out what percentage of reducing sugars are available that's quite a key factor so we can tell if the sugar if the honey is adulterated so if you happen to come across honey in the open market um, just right. before you go on how, right. how does honey get adulterated ah. that's, that's, that's <laughs> an interesting one uh, this is what happens honey is actually a viscous material so what's there is that people actually could go down to boiling molasses sugars and then it comes up in the viscous material and you can easily mix it up it appears that. And it happens. Yeah. It's very peculiar. And I can't mention it on TV now, but in, in certain parts of the country. Isn't that caramel? That's yeah, caramel. it is. It is. <laughs> and there was even a program in the United Kingdom last year, and it was found out that a lot of the honey in the shops in the UK, because there's a dying bee population in Europe and in the Western world, mm -hmm. so there's a lot more imports coming in from other countries. Unfortunately, that's why I'm saying Nigeria needs to we need to work up the game so that we can Im, 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 export, export those countries. to countries they found countries. out in the uk through the mystery shopping and all this sort of quality assurance um, tv program that a lot of the honey in the shops were sugar molasses and even we have fair high foods what we've done we also go into shops here and we buy some imported honey i wouldn't mention names and test and them. then when we test it we also find that they're not it's, they're not always honey so one thing i must say here that nigerians must learn to start using more of their own, which is our local products that are being processed or are being, you know, where you know that the manufacturers are at least of a good quality. Because not everything foreign is, is necessarily, right. yeah. Mm. Yes, mm. absolutely. Now, the, the honey yeah. seems to have various colors. Some are darker than others. Mm. Um, is the color an indication of its purity? You know, it's an indicator of where you're getting it from. He mentioned, he talked about site selection. So, for instance, if you, in my state, Cross River, we've got highlands, which is very similar terrain to Tarabana, Damawa. So, in the Obudu highlands, the sort of honey you'd collect there would be from trees and fauna that are very much eucalyptus and menthol-type plants, conifers, uh -huh. which is, would be quite similar to what you'd have in the United Kingdom 
or in Scandinavia. However, come down south, southwest, say, Oshobo Axis, which is a lot of honey in that sort of um, lo um, locality as well, it's got, you've got more palm trees, so it's going to be a darker fauna, darker, it, the, the darker the, the color mm -hmm. actually is representative of the sort of vegetation and fauna where, it's, um, where, the, where, bees where the bees are feeding from. But there's something that I really want to stress here. People do not understand that bees are so important in the ecosystem. Bees make pollination happen. Have we realized that? A lot of people yes, don't realize that. So we're talking, about, we're talking a lot about agriculture in Nigeria. We're talking about the cassava chain. We're talking about other value chains. But we're not focusing on the primary chain that actually enables everything to happen in that ecosystem. So the conversation is sort of missing the catalyst. And that's why beekeeping, is, if not for anything, most countries really safeguard their beekeeping industry because they know that it must be sustainable. So you don't just kill the bee population. The bees will make those pollinations happen and enable your harvesting and your yields and the cross-fertilization to occur for those who really understand things at that particular level. Okay. So... <coughs> You've talked about um, location yeah. or locating your beehive and all, but how do you attract the bees? If someone now look, is listening to this conversation and says, okay, let's see, I want to go into bee farming. I mean, if the bees can produce bee wax as used for mm -hmm. all the pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals and all of that, I want to go into bee farming. I get my location, but how do I attract the bees? Or do I go and buy the bees or just catch one bee and throw it in the <laughs> And it will have babies for so, <laughs> so let me, let me just, because I think the, the value chain also, is a, uh, there's a lack of understanding of the value chain. So there, there are farmers, and that's the way we are structured in our company. We've got the farmers who we've trained up and who we continue, continuously train so that they understand and they do, they sort of backward integration. So they do all the supply, the, the farming. And at that level, you know, there will always be bees. There are bees. We actually are in Africa and we are blessed. African bees are actually very aggressive. They, make, they produce more honey than more, any That's other bees in the world. Harder. That's why they sting harder. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, there, there, there are things that will train you during that uh, initial training seminar that when you come into our co-op. And as far as you're farming, as far as you put your hive in, in place and it's well-structured, Trust me, it will happen. It's a continuous because bees are everywhere. You no, know. The, that question are they? again. Yeah. How do you <laughs> draw the bees to your hive? They are everywhere. I mean, if I go out there, I might be able to catch one bee flying yeah. around. But yeah. how do we get the bees to come into? I am sitting there and I want to go into <laughs> bee farming. I want to do this. I don't want to buy adulterated bees. I mean, uh, honey. 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 Mm. I want to farm for these. So. The what that's has so when you want to catch um, an animal, for instance, you, you right. set a trap. Set a trap. Oh, yes. that's, you so, set up a hive, which was what you were just that's saying. That's basically it. You need yeah. to set, you up, set up, up a hive. hive. Describe and a hive and, and how it works to attract the bee. Right. So it's going back to set up your hive. The hive is actually a, a box of six inches length by the reach of 12. That's the smallest medium, medium size you can, minimum size you can get. And you can bat this hive with the bee, the honey itself from the previous harvest. The residue in the bee honey has got pollens and also the nectar actually of the previous years. These bees would actually come back to feed on them. So That's the bait in the hive is honey. Is, yes. is so the honey they're coming itself. back to the honey. Correct. Coming back to the honey. That attracts that them. That attracts them basically. Yeah. And they'll come and set up and form so, a, co a colony. And the colony. So if you set up a hive, you set up a hive with, so basically when you do your harvest, you need mm. to leave, it's almost like, think about mm. it as a capital investment. You make 100 liters and you keep maybe 10 liters to attract the reinvestment for the next season. So that, you know, by the time you bathe the hives and set it up and just leave it, the bees will find themselves there. They will be there because they, they've got a very strong um, sense of smell. But yeah. how is it that what they produce is what attracts them? Mm, the honey. Yeah, that's, yes. that's, that's because if you understand the, the nature of the an insect, it's actually a social insect mm -hmm. and it's got the digestive tract and it also got its uh, cavity, not the true stomach. But that's the point where it actually feeds on all of this as a separate segment comes up to mix with the saliva and you get the process d derived in 